Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is Newsfeed Now. Good Monday, everyone. Steve behind the camera is telling me I should sing. It's just another manic Monday. He likes it. We hope you had a good weekend. It is September 28th. I'm Hillary Hunt. This is Newsfeed Now. We're going to take a look at all the stories trending online, but we do want to start in the West with something that's a situation that we're continuing to monitor. Deadly fires rage in California. The shady fire that you see right there is ripping through Santa Rosa, engulfing homes and forcing evacuations. Fire crews were in full force battling those flames this morning. More than 2,000 structures are threatened by multiple fires in the Bay Area. A widespread evacuation order is underway right now. Crews have evacuated eight patients from a local hospital by air and 32 by ground. And with those hot, dry, windy conditions in the forecast for Southern California, those battling the fires obviously very worried. Santa Ana winds are expected late Sunday night. Firefighters continue to try and contain the 178 square mile Bobcat fire. The wildfire is torn through the Angeles National Forest. Here's John Fenelio. Another heat wave is on its way to Southern California, along with potentially powerful Santa Ana winds adding to already dangerous fire conditions. Santa Ana winds specifically are those warmer winds that really kick up those, those that fire activity here in Southern California. And now through November is the season for the Santa Anas. That weather, fuel, and topography, when those things come in alignment, that's what creates that potential for for uh, fire growth. Firefighters battling the Bobcat fire in the Angeles National Forest are bracing for a potential change in the weather that could create extreme fire danger. This is definitely an extreme fire season. Uh, we've been we've been at it quite quite a long while now. The National Weather Service says wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour are possible for parts of LA and Ventura counties. The valleys and interior regions could also see triple digit temperatures. The most critical fire danger will be early in the week in the mountains north of Los Angeles and other foothill communities throughout the Southland. Fire weather watches and red flag warnings have been issued across California. At least 25 major fires are burning across the state, scorching more than three and a half million acres. Resources uh, all throughout the state of California are responding to various fires. Even just today, we had two new starts, uh, the Glass Fire in Napa County and the Zog Fire up in Redding. Uh, so we're not quite out of the weeds yet. Let's talk TikTok. Ooh, I love some TikTok. A federal judge on Sunday partially granted TikTok's request for a temporary injunction against a push by the Trump administration to ban the app in the United States. The ruling blocks a U.S. government ban on downloads of the app just merely hours before the policy was actually set to take effect. The decision is a victory for TikTok after its challenge ban as U.S. as unconstitutional and a violation of due process. I know a lot of people out there don't want TikTok ban. I know I sometimes get down the TikTok hole. I'm on it too much. And if you've been on TikTok, you may have come across a video from the Emporia, Kansas Police Department. The officer behind the TikToks really hopes the video will break down barriers between law enforcement in the public. Here's Kelly Sabri. If you've been on TikTok, you may have come across this video. this. I never realized that this officer is actually from a department in our backyard. I don't really don't post much on social media, honestly. That is until now. JT Clarence is the mind behind these videos. The Emporia State grad has worked for the Emporia Police Department for almost three years now, and he's sharing a part of his day with the world. That is, if other officers will get in on the fun with him. Kind of depends on who it is. Some people don't want to be on camera, on TV, or whatever it is. Fortunately for him, some of them joined in. I'm nervous now. But it wasn't as easy as it looks. Yeah, it <laughs> They're funny. We call him Mr. Emporia from these TikToks. Dominic Vortherms tells me that these videos help boost morale. You know, you're taking several guys from the shifts to do it, so you're interacting with everybody and you're having a good time. And it's showing another side of law enforcement at a time where everyone could use an extra smile. I think it definitely helps uh, kind of break down the, the line between the us and them kind of thing. Um, kind of sees people that look for what they are rather than the uniform or the badge or something like that. So.
I love the top, the cops on TikTok. They call them the TikTok cops. They're pretty great. Some of them have dogs too. But let's move on to Capitol Hill. President Trump dismisses a new report in the New York Times that alleges years of tax avoidance as fake news. According to the New York Times report, President Trump only paid $750. You heard that right. $750 in federal income taxes in 2016, the year he ran for president. And again, in the first year of presidency. The Times also reported that the president did not pay any income taxes in 10 of the previous 15 years, mostly because he reported significant losses. At a Sunday news conference, moments after the report was published, the president said he has paid his taxes. Even if the New York Times story is accurate, Trump paid other forms of federal taxes, including Medicare, Social Security, and alternative minimum tax. And a tale of two campaigns is emerging ahead of the first face-to-face -face meeting in the general election between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden Tuesday night on the big presidential debate stage. While well, President Trump has hit the campaign trail pretty hard, holding eight events in the last week, Biden has taken a different approach, keeping a light schedule in order to prepare for the upcoming meeting. In an interview with MSNBC on Saturday, the former vice president predicted his time on the debate stage will be tough and expects the president will get pretty personal. And the commercial free debate will be moderated by Fox News Sunday anchor Chris Wallace. And you can watch that debate tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on this website you're watching right now. You can watch it on WGN America as well with our News Nation team or just go to NewsNationNow.com. And before we go, let's talk about some football. The NFL season officially underway and in Denver. A lucky few thousand fans got a chance to experience a game in person after months of waiting to see what was going to happen. I was happy with the outcome as a Tampa girl. But with the pandemic, of course, there were some changes. But that didn't stop a lot of people from coming out. Here's Nicole Fierro. So, are you ready? In come, play! Broncos fans are back. Go Broncos! Go. Anyway, we're going in. It's the Bronconator and the Calvinator. <laughs> Capacity capped at 5,700 fans. Oh, yeah, it'd be a lot different. <laughs> Smaller crowds, but the orange and blue pride. Go Broncos! Go Broncos! Big as ever. One of 5,700 is amazing. I'm feeling good. Longtime fans feeling lucky to get tickets. Been going since uh, 1973, I've been coming. So, uh, yeah, we thought this might be the first year that we didn't go. Shouldn't ask for anything else. It's a cold day, but it's a good day for Broncos to be Broncos fans. Just brace my string of opening game, home games with shorts on, and I'm upset over that. But it's fine. <laughs> Everything's good. Everything's good. Derek and Tim have been season ticket holders for 20 years. I'd guess 200 games. 200? 200? Uh, over 150. Yeah, easy. They are having a tricky time with one of the new rules, no tailgating. That was Definitely fun. missing it, because we that usually have a yes. real big tailgate. But you go to the game, sit down and watch the game, get involved. Um, we went to the station beforehand, and it was a little... A little weird. It just feels not even like a preseason game, but I don't know. I'm just excited to be here. I got my mask. Excited. I'm all ready. An understatement. I'm ready, yes, indeed. For this famous <sighs> fan. Masked up, decked out, ready? ready to watch ready to by the new rules. Go Broncos! Go Broncos! <laughs> Okay, let's talk about seat limitations in Denver. It didn't stop, you know, Broncos fans from trying to pack the stadium where they can. Well, they also got a little creative during Sunday's game against my hometown team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. One of the end zones actually was filled with 1,800 character cutouts from South Park. Check that out based on a town in Colorado. The cutouts are all a part of the Broncos initiative to raise some money for charity. Love to see that. Let's bring in Drew Engelbart from Denver. And Drew, I have been waiting to talk smack about yesterday's game because as a lifetime <laughs> Bucks fan, we have been the sucks for so long, but we got a pretty big W yesterday. <laughs> You did. You know, the Broncos are injured. You know, starting quarterback, Drew Locke is out. Vaughn Miller is out on defense. And, you know, Tom Brady has a losing record in Denver. One of the only team, the only team that Tom Brady has a losing record against is the Denver Broncos. Well, that changed on Sunday. He got the win against the Broncos, so now he's 500 against the Broncos. But can you believe that, that Tom Brady does not 
have a losing record against any team in the NFL now after that game on Sunday. So Broncos fans not happy uh, on this Monday morning, but I think we all enjoyed the, the cutouts of South Park there. A lot of people don't realize that's an actual town uh, based on an actual town here in Colorado. I didn't even know that either. So look, I'm learning something new every day, and I think people were just more excited to see NFL football in action because a lot of teams right now aren't letting fans in. Some of the other teams watching to see what the Broncos are doing, how they're staying safe. So talk about some of those measures in place for fans so that they could go to the game, they could enjoy it, and they could enjoy it safely. Yeah, so there's 5,700 fans in the stands on Sunday. That's only about 7% capacity of uh, in Power Field at Mile High. So they started off really low. Some of the other stadiums are doing you know, 20,000. The Chiefs did their first game. And uh, I actually had the chance to go to the first game of the year. There was only 500 people there, but uh, it was for players and staff that got a couple tickets each, kind of a test run. So I am familiar with the staff member there. So I got to go to the game, and it was very weird to see no fans in the stands. You try to be as loud as you can, but certainly they had – each uh, other stall blocked off. Each other concession stand was blocked off. You had to go through a specific gate depending where your seat was. There was no congregating in the concourses. Uh, there was actually folks that worked for the team out there making sure people weren't gathering, making sure that you had your mask on. And I'll say the game that I went to, the first home game, it was a Monday night game in week one the Broncos played. Everyone was wearing a mask. And it appears from television, I didn't go to the game on Sunday, that everyone had their mask on. And it sounds like they're going to bump that number up from 50 700 each week that we go and they might cap out at about 17,000 at Empower Field at Mile High which normal capacity is 75,000 so I think that's our excuse for Tom Brady getting a win here in Denver on Sunday is he didn't have the typical 75,000 orange and blue fans screaming at him. You know what? Let Tampa fans just have this moment. <laughs> this is a okay. special moment. But speaking of moments, I got one more question. How do you get yep. the golden ticket? You know, how do you get to be part of that 7% that was there? You know, how, do you have to be the, the fan that's been a longtime season ticket holder for 20 years like we heard from in the story? I mean, how do you get that golden ticket? Yeah, they did a lottery for season ticket holders, and I know a lot of season ticket holders out there wanted to go, but you, your number had to be picked, essentially. And then it was interesting, I think they announced on Thursday, the Broncos did it as a team, that they were going to release a very limited number of tickets. So they actually released about 170 tickets on the Ticketmaster. So there was some lucky folks that aren't even season ticket holders that did have the opportunity to go. I'm not sure where that extra 170 tickets came from but it sounds like that's what they're going to do from here on out if you're a season ticket holder you get into a lottery and if you get your number called then you get that lucky golden ticket and then if they have any extra they'll release them but you know how it goes on Ticketmaster for a concert or anything like that you get in one of those queue lines you could be in there forever and it's just uh, luck of the draw to get in, I guess. Oh, yeah. But, you know, just got to cross your fingers and hope you're a lucky right. ducky in Denver. Thanks so much for that's spending right. time with us. It. And, you know, way to go, Bucks. Sorry, had to. Well, that's all the time we have for our show. We're going to be right back here tomorrow. Same place, same time. I hope you guys have a great Monday. Get some coffee. You know, have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Bye.